Hello, Salesforce Ohana. How many times have you written a pattern like this where you need to insert a parent record? Then once that parent record is inserted, you're taking that ID and then creating the child record. This is a pretty common pattern in Apex. And in this video, I wanna show you a neat kind of trick that you can use to insert both the parent and child records at the same time. If you didn't know, I'm Walters954, 18 times certified Salesforce developer. And I like to talk about code and Salesforce in general on this channel. In this video, let's learn how to do this parent-child insert so you can speed up your Apex development. Jumping into the code here, we can execute this and we know it's going to run successfully. Or what's going on here? It looks like we have an external ID requirement and this error is actually a good segue into what we need to make this parent and child insertion at the same time work. We need an external ID field. So I went ahead and on the account record, I created an external ID field. I think we can click it if we are on the account itself, if this ever loads, or let's just jump into the object setup so that you can see the field that we have created here. And I aptly named it external ID. And the key here is to make sure that you have checked the external ID checkbox. I also made the field required for some reason and that was just for fun. So to do this double insert, we need to have an external ID on the record. And if we're looking over here, let's actually just add in an external ID. Let's going to do string external ID and let's just call it one, two, three, four, five for right now. And over in the object creation, we need to add in that external ID equals the external ID value that we are creating. So now if we run this, what's going on here now? Oh, I need to add in my semicolons. Let's drop that. So now those records should have been created just like we've done many, many times before where it's inserting this. Once this has been inserted into the database, it automatically sets the ID back into this variable here. And then we're able to take that and use it inside of the the child record that we are using. Now to make this all kind of work, let's just check the objects really quickly. We can see the account has been created and the opportunity has been created. So now to make this work so that we can do both at the same time, we need to make sure that we have set the external ID. Let me actually just move this to maybe a random number so that we can have a nice random number, string that value of, and then date that get time that should be a random number that gets generated there and this is any external id of course if you have this coming from a different system or something like that you can set that value in there as well and then let's add in over here we want to just add in that external id so we know which one we are actually working with let's do a little space so saving that, that looks good. We need to make sure to set the external ID. The next thing that we are going to do is we're not gonna do an insert over here. We need to create a reference account. So an account that is just in memory or just a reference object. It doesn't need to be an account, but whatever object you are working with, you need to create just one in memory. So let's create a reference account. And this is going to, once again, be a new account. Let's see what the prefill is doing in here. I'll take that, but all we need is to set the external ID value. This is the key with everything and how this object updating is working. We're using this reference account. This is only set in memory and then we're able to use that later on. Now that that is set in the child record, in the child that needs to also automatically be set, we're gonna change it from setting the ID to the reference field. We can see in this dropdown there is account and account ID. So account ID is the underlying reference field that relates that value to the parent where the account ID is normally what we set and that's just the ID field that kind of hooks everything up. In this instance, we're gonna use account and just set the reference account to it and make sure that this reference account is empty except for the external ID that is set. Everything else is the same. And now we're going to use the DML insert, but instead of sending in accounts or 
like maybe you would think this would work accounts and opportunities we're actually going to set this to a new list of s objects right because everything inside of salesforce all of these objects here is an s object and then we are going to do the insert so let's run this and see what happens we should get everything looking smooth there we also lock that let's check the org to see if anything was created we see the test account in here and then the opportunity automatically set in there. Let's run this one more time. What's really cool with this is that this is one DML statement that got done. It's two DML rows, but one DML statement. So like that 150 limit that we have, this counts as just one DML statement, which is awesome. So this is working pretty great. There's a few key things that I wanna reiterate about this pattern. We have the account record created in here, so it's its own object. This could already exist inside of the org. What we really need though to, to set the child is this reference, right? We need this reference object inside of here and then setting that to the relationship field. Then, since we're doing both the inserts at the same time, we're using this list of S objects and adding them in, just using this shorthand for adding that list in. Let's do another example so that we can understand this a little bit better, and especially using custom objects. I think I have a custom object called cohort in here, and cohorts can have a child of students. So this has because a classroom ID and a I think I renamed those, but the, those should be the cohort IDs and stuff like that. So let's set the cohort ID. So getting that external ID again. This time we're going to use UUID class random UUID and two strings. So this is another way of generating an external ID that you can use that will be unique. Let's set the cohort. Just create a, a cohort object in here. So it's a new cohort fill that out and then we've got the name it can be cohort that's fine and then the id at the end there and then also and once again with the key points that we need the cohort id cohort id needs to be set to the cohort id that we have created that unique identifier that we have inside of the org next up let's make sure to create that cohort reference reference cohort because we know we're going to need it later pre-fill in all of that. But the key, once again, is empty other than the external ID that we are creating. Let's not just create maybe one student and add it in. Let's do multiple students because this is kind of how it works with cloud code where we have internally a Salesforce org, we have open enrollment, lots of people come through and they make it push a ton of students through on that day. So let's maybe insert a few for integer equals 10 oh 100 no let's do 10 and we can see that we're building out a student in here we've got the student's name the iterator here is fine and then we'll take a look at how to set this cohort right because before we would do something like this cohort id and setting it to the cohort lookup field which takes in an id and this is a bad practice so now we need to start one making sure that this is a good practice of bulkifying our code. So setting that student list, and then we've got students, add students, and then now we need to figure out how to put all of this together, right? Because we can't do our reference cohort to the ID like this. This is not the reference field or, or the underlying lookup field that references the overall object. This field is a lookup field that is looking for the ID. So what we need to do here is change this to underscore underscore R for those custom lookup fields. Now that we have added in the students to a list, we have the cohort that we want to insert, we can come over here and start building out that list of S objects, call it records, and then records.add in our cohorts, records.add all our students, right? Because since we have a list of students, the add all is key there. And then you can also do something like database dot save results and make that a list and then do database insert of the records. And there are additional parameters in here, like if we're allowing partial saves and stuff like that, which can be really nice if you're inserting multiple records this way. You can check the results to see which records actually came through successfully. You also have some options to do like partial inserts and stuff like that. So let's run this. I know it's a little more cumbersome and complex, but it should work. Let's check out the Salesforce org. And we've got our cohort here. 
that looks pretty great. And then our related records all in one shot, which is cool. And then once again, you know, we've got 11 records that have come through in the DML rows, but we have only one DML statement that has gone off, which is really nice. So that's how you can insert multiple parent and child records at the same time inside of Apex. It's a really fun trick that you can have in your back pocket to make your code more efficient. Just lastly, let me pull up the documentation here so you can see the parent child foreign key single statement using this is kind of funny and and the documentation is actually a little hard to read but anyways it, it goes over the same stuff so let me know in the comments down below if you have used this technique before in your code recently i've used this while building out an integration program for cloud coders which is really fun and if some of the things that we talked about today kind of went over your head definitely check out some of the other videos that i have particularly this one which goes over some different things that you can do to learn Salesforce programming. As always, I'm Walters954. Thanks so much for watching, and I believe in you.